Hi, chickens. Spring is coming, I promise. Oh my gosh, we've had so much snow. This video that we're doing today is a sequel. Uh, I did a video with the hips with Scott Wiseman, a level three ski instructor from the Towski Valley in New Mexico. The last couple of weeks, Scott has been working really hard. Uh, it's tough to change movement patterns in skiing. Any of you who work on your skiing, you can appreciate that, right? This video, we're doing a few exercises, and I think in the video you're gonna see a lot of change in Scott skiing and some understanding change as well. That's sort of fun. Uh, we're focusing, as it turns out, on the relationship between the feet, the lower body, to the upper body or the center of mass and how we're managing that. Um, it's kind of a long video, but don't miss the end because I do a little bit of MA on Scott skiing for a couple of his turns. And then finally, if you care to support the channel, which I always appreciate, you can go to my YouTube channel. The about page at the bottom is my tip jar. You can make a contribution there or at the link right here. Thank you very much and enjoy the video. You know what had to transpire a lot in the last two weeks is changing a lot of my understanding. And I think that that's a, a big part of changing your movement. You have to know what you're trying to do. And, um, you know, trying to really think a lot about where my center of mass is in relation to my feet. I used to think a lot that when I carved, I had to move just across my skis. I didn't, the piece I was missing is that I wasn't also moving forward. So now I'm trying to move forward and across. And if uh, you watched the last video we did together, um, that meant that our feet were behind us at the beginning of the turn. Then you get from the apex to the end of the turn, right. and that position of where your foot is under your under your hip uh, even changes again. Somewhat. It does, and to kind and then of what uh, do you do about it? At this level of skiing, Scott, we're dealing with a platform that we've established, right? Uh, where is our center of mass in relation to that platform? Uh, we're moving to a new turn, so we're gonna we're gonna. Uh, change the relationship of our center of mass. Where is that relationship to our feet? We talked about fore aft and that relationship, those feet are going to come under us. The feet are going to go to the other side of our center of mass. And how in the world do we go about that? And there's so much we're dealing with. One thing we're dealing with at that point is pressure. Some people don't like the word pressure. You could say forces. You could say weight. We're managing something. We've got a side cut of a ski. We have camber. We have our body weight. We've got edge angle. We've got flipping forces. Is that In my one of the view, cool parts about skiing though? We have pressure. You know, that, that, that's, yeah. there's a lot going on. I already feel that was a better set of turns than beginning of last last video. You know, I felt like I was shaping the top of the turn a little bit more. Uh -huh. When you were on the flat, there's like this up motion, an up motion which to me is not necessary. Okay. That seems to me manufactured when there are not a whole lot of forces. Um, you yourself are generating something to me that seems unnecessary. Okay. You know, I, I was in front of you, there is like, I, I felt the up move and I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. don't, don't show Deb an up move right now. And then I had. And then it, you did it. And then I and was I like, caught okay, you. don't. It was like, you caught me. You caught me. I, I caught you. It's very subtle, but I like felt that little up move and I'm like, oh man. But here's Deb's the gonna thing, see Scott. That. Deb's going to see that. Here's the thing, Scott. Yeah. It's not that subtle. <laughs> you think it's subtle. Yeah. It's, that's, it's significant. Okay. That's a big movement. Okay. It's it's bigger than you think. That that's the interesting thing interesting. with the ski stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but let's now let's right now think of um, where our center of mass is in relation to our feet. Okay. And when we're in the belly of the turn, we've got high edge angle, our feet are to the side of us. Mm -hmm. To the end of the turn, we're gonna we're gonna change that relationship of the center of mass uh, in relation to our, our, feet. To our feet. And that outside leg we're, we're going to um, absorb that pressure with the outside leg as that outside leg becomes our new inside leg. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming out of the, out of the turn. There's my outside leg. So it's coming 
coming back under. There you go. There this you go. This is move, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the shortening. Okay. And you know what you did right there that was so brilliant? You brought it under you and you also you tipped and rolled it. Right, right, that's, right. You right. naturally did that. That's okay. gotta that's gotta happen. Okay. There, there was some stuff I, going on there. There's some stuff going on. It wasn't, it'll be fun to watch because I know it wasn't perfect. There was stuff going on. There was some up, I felt, but I had some where I didn't come up. And those yeah, were a little different. You, you, you were generating some energy underfoot. You got, you were popped. That yeah. belly at the turn, that leg is long, right? And then you, you're bringing that outside leg back under you, retracting, and um, just, be proactive, be anticipatory of pressure and for, or I'll say forces at the end of the turn. When you are decreasing your edge angle, mm -hmm. we'll call that releasing, releasing. the edge at the end. Um, you know, you're going to be managing those forces and you can get a pop. That, that may come quickly, it, it may not, but anticipate okay. the end of okay. that turn. Cool. Anticipate those forces. I wonder this, how do I know when I'm squatty? Feel free to ski the skis away from you at the belly of the turn. Ski them away from you. That's length. Ah, okay. Okay? okay. That's length and skiing them away from you is edge angle. You said ski something them away. great in the last video, strength and length. That's right. But to get the length, you have to ski those skis away from you into the belly. That's right. Okay. You want to know what I saw there? Sure. I want to hear. I saw swagger. Swagger? Swagger. What's swagger? What, what is swagger? I don't know if I know what swagger is because I, I don't saw, know if I've ever felt it. I saw swagger. I saw confidence. I saw happy. <laughs> I saw that felt good. I mean, you tell me what, what that felt like. I really wanted to feel the legs reaching out. And I was pulling back under. Um, but as uh, I also had to give myself kind of like an emotional and mental focus too, because I try so often to be perfect. I get rigid. You were exploring range of motion that got you out of a cookie cutter, out of a box. You, you were yes. exploratory. You explored a range of motion. You skied those skis out from under you farther than you usually do. That was awesome. <laughs> playing Thank you. with Thank you. playing with the forces and managing those forces, managing that pressure, um, was a was a different look. Uh, such a range of movement. Like I said, it's that's the. I think that's the hook is feeling these forces build and and learning how to manage them. I think this is, it's almost an addicting feeling. Yeah. And uh, it's a, it is a very high level of skiing. Yeah. I was also thinking about pulling my feet back uh -huh. behind me. Yeah, cool. And uh, gosh, when you go in Mach Schnell, it takes a lot of feeling of trust. Yeah. Like your your skis are almost out of your peripheral yeah. vision. Yeah. Um, yeah. For a moment, you're almost reaching back behind you, um, and on. then believing that you can snap them right back underneath. It takes a lot, a lot of trust. You're definitely maneuvering that lower body and and where it is in relationship to your center of mass absolutely huge huge, I mean, huge, that, huge i'm trying to create that that length from the legs there you go bring them under okay you're sinking down okay make your leg long under you long and bring it back what you were doing in your tuck is you were, your hip positioning was going up and down. Okay. Instead of being in your tuck, having your leg long, and then come back under you, long, 
and under you, my hip position did not change. I didn't do any of this okay. with the retracting. So it's like when you're in moguls, keeping your head position the same. You want your hip, yeah, the hip does not go up and down. Let that outside leg get out there more. Just experiment with that range. Let it get out there. Ski it out there, there, there. There we go. Yeah. Get that out there. Your hips are going up and down a little bit. Get that leg out there. There you go. Edge angle. I had to trust it. Again, yeah. The tuck isolates the hips and the upper body, and it allows you to focus solely on those legs. Bring the sensations from the tuck to life. Think about the hips. And when you started with the tuck, your hips are going up and down. We replaced up and down with the leg reaching that leg out there. are bringing your outside leg and making it short. You simultaneously need to be thinking of the inside leg that's becoming long. Okay. You okay. see what I'm saying? Right. So we've been focusing on outside leg, let's make it short. But you need to multitask. I think maybe I took it too far. Again, it comes to the over baking comment yeah. you, you often say. Yeah. Um, Maybe too squatty, too, too yeah, compressed I, I the transition. I think so. I think so. So um, right now, right now you need to have the ability to think that you've got an outside leg that's becoming new inside. Simultaneously, you have an inside leg that's becoming your new outside. Oh my goodness. So much to think about, right? That's a lot. Uh, but, but, but I'll keep the spirit of that tuck and that, that low yeah. position alive where, okay, hips not going to move up and down. Yeah, that, that's, um, that's a, that, now yeah. that's a lot. So. Right. Uh, why, why don't you make the focus right now, the, the, the outside leg becoming new inside while simultaneously making the space for your inside leg to become your new outside. Those two things need to happen together. This is a little different. Go, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's subtle, but it's it's different. While you were making the old outside leg your new inside, you were establishing your new platform with that foot getting behind your hip just a hair. That movement became more evident. And, I was thinking that. Yeah, that yeah. that was uh, that was different alignment, better alignment, um, establishing that new platform. Okay. Yeah. With the foot slightly behind. Slightly behind. Uh, so you you multitask there, Scott. Well done. So you've got two legs uh, that are changing from outside to inside, and uh, that that's a, that's a lot. Let's see you manage both legs here. happy and that was loading the ski tip yeah a bit more I could really feel like I can bend the ski in a tighter arc early in the turn when it's going well yeah that's the ski performance piece and my motivation in this uh, to get more performance out of the tool that I'm on yeah that's right and uh, when it's going well I feel feel that snap I feel the ski biting into the top part of the turn early Okay, a lot of flexion through transition here and open ankle. This is going to require a big and lightning quick move for four aft balance to get forward into the new turn and establish the edge necessary for the new turn.
So how do we do that? It depends on the energy from the previous turn. Are our legs crossing under us or are we establishing the new platform as our center of mass crosses over our skis? Either way, we need the new edge platform with which we're gonna be bending our arc. So specifically, how are we managing 4F pressure at this moment? That right foot gets behind the hip, the left knee drives forward and we're leveraging up and getting that ski tip, the right ski tip to deflect and bend through the turn. As for edge angle, edging, flexing more of that left knee will generate more edge angle for a deeper turn shape. So at this very moment in the turn, Scott is slightly dumping his inside hip which essentially through the arc is gonna put him more on his heels. He's not keeping up with four aft balance. What he could do instead is drive his left inside knee for his four aft balance and stacking. This is the moment of the turn where the full stroking of the ski kind of occurs where you may feel a bit more heel pressure, but you gotta be really careful with that and not get too far back. That occurs all through the ankle joint. Remember, the more squished you get at the hips at the end of the turn, or the more back you may be, it's just more of a move to recenter to get into the top of the new turn.